What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Over Your Shoulder. Today, we'll continue down the rabbit hole with Mark Carolyn and his setup for Muse. So it looks like we're going to go one rack down, house left, closer to the console. Um, and it looks like at the top of the rack is the GML 8200, is it? Yeah, okay. So so we're at my, that, that's my left, right, my mix bus. Okay, uh, you're, you're a flavor. Yeah, that's my 8200 on the SMC-TV. And the path is GML first, followed by the SMC-TV. As you see with the, the GML, and I, have to, I used to have to do this with the XL4, and um, I still have to do this all the time, is which way the Q knob goes for wide versus narrow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good. I, I love that. It's still kind of, it, it plays in your, your mentality of less thinking, because I yeah. honestly feel like you, you don't want to think about it. you just like, oh, I just want to widen that EQ out a little bit. You don't want to just... yeah. You don't want to think about it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that's my left right process. The GML is never doing system equalization; it's the program equalization. Okay. So are you doing like broad strokes? Or are you kind of more of like with uh, the GML? Um, yeah. Again, it's t you know it's tiny, you know it's but it's what the GML does, you know, up in the air bands. Sometimes just a little push down below, and then it's just like mix you know i think the biggest you'll see is around kind of 160 80 hertz you know that kind of thing uh sometimes around four to five hundred but it's it's minuscule but the thing is with the gml like, even everything flat and you put it through a gml it just comes out sounding better <laughs> <laughs> yeah what it's there for, you know and then so after the gml we have the the, the tube tech again a recurring team it's it's doing just little kisses uh, um, so I've got the high band set as high as I can, and the attack release set as quick as I can. What I was trying to do, I mean, I'm sure this is technically wrong and you know, it's probably rubbish, but the result does kind of do something nice. So I was trying to emulate what VDOS used to do back in the day. And you had a really nice VDOS system outdoors in a warm night, you know, with, you know on a flat field. And it did this lovely, like, harmonic tickle to your ear. I was trying to bring a bit of that back, and, and, and it kind of does the, the, does the same thing. It's just like a, I don't know, it's like a niceness. I don't know. Yeah. But, but it, it, it had the added benefit as well as, you know, if anything is getting out of control up there, it's taken care of that as well. But okay. in the mini, it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of just tickling away. The low end of that, is, that's kind of venue dependent. You know, if you've got a venue that's getting a little bit very in particular points, in particular songs, it can just give you this little tightness that you can bring in if you okay. want. And then the, the sort of mid band that's left between the two, that would come in useful for me in very noise restricted situations like, you know, various Swiss cantons or, you know, like we, we are facing like a 92 dB limit or something crazy like that. And I could deploy that for, you know, the snares or whatever, where I do actually need to, to do like, compression then i can just do it that way all right next in the rack we got a um a maggie q and what is this this uh kush oh, what's a, a fatso yeah it's, it's it's a modded fatso how it differs is the the knee in terms of frequency starts lower than the fatso so the fatso is kind of doing pure pure tape emulation so it's up quite high but what i'm in this instance so the the, the mag and the the, the fatso are working as a stereo unit. This links to below, you'll see there's a need summer. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm stemming out of the console into this summer, and you can see you can see how that breaks out. There's a kick, snare, drum kit, bass, guitar, keyboards, vocals, backing vocals, and then miscellaneous for, you know, different percussion things, whatever. And that's how I've laid out my sum summation. The, 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 uh, the MOG Audio and Fatso pair are sitting on my kit group, which essentially is kit minus kick and snare. If that makes sense. So it's okay. Kick, mix minus kick and snare. The reason I did that is I love that the, that the kick and snare are bang up the middle, and they are their own thing, and, and, and it's quite a fixed thing. So the the mag and and and, and fatso sit over the drums. Obviously, you, the mag has that killer airband stuff that you can you can wind in on the, on the, on you know the the top of the kit, and then you've got the kush sitting after that, which is kind of calming that down again. So it's kind of like driving into something that's saturating back down. Okay. Uh, again, it goes back to that kind of you keep it dynamic. So as he's 
leaning into the symbols. You're not compressing the symbols, but the symbols are, are driving more. And they're, so they're not getting a gr- more aggressive on your on your ears, but the feeling of them is getting more aggressive. It's getting driving. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I mean, it kind of gives you this this feeling of excitement without using volume or specific frequencies shooting yeah. through. You know, I, I don't like to to, to to overly compress overheads. Right? I don't use parallel compression on my drums, for instance. And so just for clarification's uh, sake, all your inserts so far up to this point returned to the console and then got stemmed back out into the satellite, right? Is that how you're doing that kind well, of well yeah so kind of um <laughs> so <laughs> the final you know the, the final frontier is 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 the summer yeah so the output of that summer is the left right you, remember we talked about the layers so output from the layer on top is rooted to the summer so it's oh. stem to the summer when you're mixing you're driving into this bus uh, yeah i'm driving into this bus i'm driving into the summer so the, so the kit left, right, is driven by the actual, the faders at the top. Yeah. Got it. And the Kush Fatso and the Mog, that's inserted on the group and then it's returned back and sent out? Or do you just yeah. send it right from here? That, that's actually analog. It's an analog insertion on the summer. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. It's kind of a, it's a very pure analog path in, in this instance, you know? Yeah. You could pick the drive in a pure analog fashion for that, you know? So you can maintain whatever game structure you want up to that point. And then if you want, you could drive it in more, you play around with that, you know? Okay. So, and you're only using one of the mixes, right? On the, the satellite? That's correct. I'm only okay. using one. one thing I did have to be very careful, and, you know, we'll probably touch on um, delay compensation, et cetera. But I also do sub on and augs. So oh, I had to be very careful about where that pickup would happen and how it would end up lined up back with this left, right. But because so much of the sub- things that are happening are analog domain, it all worked out really well. <laughs> it was like okay. quite, quite an easy thing to do. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I think out of that unit, what it does is it it goes back into um, an apogee, which which was A to Ding it again. At that point, then you've got the combined mix. Okay. As you know, we, there can be a lot of different demands on that mix. Streaming demands, broadcast demands, blah, 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 you know. Actually, with some stuff, we ended up doing you know, quite specific mixes for different things. But I wanted to have the option that I could give someone the mix without the program EQ, so, so without the GML and, and, and the, the tube tech. So I could give a flat, if you want to call it a flat mix, doesn't have that kind of final mix processing on it. Then the mix going to the system would have the, the GML and the, the tube tech stuff on it as well. So it's kind of like leaving myself free to to keep all this combination or summation, but also to be able to farm out less processed versions of things as well without too much work. Well, let's jump into, I think, I, I guess this would be the farthest house right rack. We're on house right now, yeah. Yeah, so we're 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 making the turn here. So we have another XL42 and a distressor, and it looks like a 901. This is are we in vocal world now? Is that yeah, is that vocal we're... world? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, with Matt, we generally have three stages of of vocal. Basically, it's clean an overdriven Avalon, and then a balls the wall distorted sounds on. Okay. Very vocal and they're usually mutually exclusive so it's it's a switched system so it's either clean or it's avalon or it's completely distorted there are really rare occasions where we will combine clean and sounds on but they're quite rare i quite liked having the main vocal processing right there i can see it all really quick and i've been using it for for quite a while that that chain so it's it's second nature and actually what we ended up having to do on the simulation theory sure so that that, that XL42 is not a, a mic pre, that's running as a line. We have multiple mic positions around the station and we've had multiple handhelds that are getting switched around. And essentially what I did was I broke it down into a grouping of what I would call in and out. And, and what that meant was, it, will the microphone be behind the PA the whole time or will it go in front of the PA the whole time? And I would have it, you know, a slightly different process depending on that usage. So, you know, obviously behind the PA is... is <laughs> It's, you know, it's a lot easier to deal with. If you imagine the yellow is behind and red is in front. Got it. 
What's quite the, the difference between the yellow and the red is that the red will have a channel of Dolby EQ specifically for it. Um, so I can do super fine, tiny, you know, notches out that I need so that if he's, you know, 30 meters in front of the PA point and the mic at the PA, it's going to be all good. So it, it allowed me to do focuses on different ways depending on on, on how, to, how how that microphone is going to get, you know, or where that microphone is going to go. And I'm seeing there's, is there, uh, are these chains exactly the same or in the same order? Yes. Yeah. What I would do is I would use the 90, 901 in a split mode. So it would do three. It would hit the low and low mid of the 901, come out, hit the distressor, come out of the distressor, back into the second side of the 901, which is the high mid and the high, and then return. Oh, X, yeah. so XL442 into the low band of the, BS, the, the BSS 901, into yeah. the distressor, out of the distressor, into the high band. And well, yeah, so, so in, in the 901, there's, there's four bands, and it's split in the middle. So you've got low, low mid, yeah. split. Yeah. High, high mid high. So yeah, it's exactly that. Into the low low mid, out of the low low mid, into the distressor, out of the distressor, into the high mid high, and then back. Oh, huh, that's pretty crazy. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> yeah. So so basically, why do that? So it allowed me to take obviously plosives out really quick without plosives running the whole compression sound. Okay. So plosives come out really quick. And then there's what I would call a high level frequency where he, 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 you know, he, he can get quite powerful and operatic. A lot of this is to do with Matt as well as, you know, he, he can be quite, how should I put this, dynamic with his head movements. <laughs> yeah. It's a particular challenge I have. What I'm trying to do is kind of even out tonality, you know, from the mic moving around the axis and changing its proximity quite a, quite a bit. Um, so the 901 is fantastic at doing that as well. So as the proximity is coming in, that low band is kicking in as, as howls, howls are happening over here or, you know, whatever. So that's handled. So that kind of, you want to call it high energy stuff is handled before the compression. So the yeah. compression is not working all that stuff. You know, that's, that's all handled before we get to this, the distressor. So then I can set the distressor up to the type of, kind of more color compression that I want. It's not having to handle all the like, what I would call level issues. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not doing a lot of dog work. That's all done. So that when you get to the distressor, it's like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm kissing it at minus three, minus four, you know, maybe up to minus seven here or there or whatever. It's doing that color compression, not, not the leg work. So that allows then when we come out of there that it's hitting the, the high mid high exactly where I want it as well. Oh. Yeah. You know, again, they're just handling specific characteristics that are going to, you know, that are... A little PA dependent. Yeah, a little, yeah. Um, and then, you no, know, there's an, an S at the top, obviously, uh, and that's quite specific with Matt. Uh, we use the Neumann 104, 105 capsules. Uh, I've tried everything else. <laughs> it's still the one. It just really works. And it's where it really shines against everything else is off axis. It kills every other microphone. The Avalon is, so that's... Oh, this, yes. That's what yeah. I wanted to get into. Let's so get into that. Again, the, the pass is the same. We're just using the right-hand side of that XL42 as the line pre. And then we're into the same chain, you know, so split 901, Avalon, sorry, distressor, back in, and, and, and home we go. When I say Avalon, it's there's there's a bunch of Avalon, um, the, you know, the 737 uh, that live on stage. This came from we, the first Brits performance we did way, way, way back when Mysteria had just come out. I was staying in a hotel room and he said, just order whatever you want and just try and get a nice focal distortion sound because we were actually using a kidney pod. I don't know if you remember those. Yeah. So we got to step this up. So I, I was sat in this hotel room in England with like, rocks and shit. And we settled on the, uh, the Avalon 737. It's just overdriven a bit, just where it's that kind of overdriven tube vibe. Touch of EQ happening there as well. But they live on stage because they've always just lived on stage because they're they're going to Matt's ears. They, you know, it's not a front of house specific thing. He performs into that distortion. You know, with, with vocal distortions, I, I think that the vocal performer should feel how they're hitting that distortion and, and, and learn to kind of perform the distortion. Yeah, um, which which Matt's really good at doing that. So I guess you have three three inputs, vocal inputs. You said, and you have is, yeah. Is well, that can we, you have divided it in, into so, three? So 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 we've and they feed into this channel. Yeah. So yeah. So any of 
we, we got a, quite a cool uh, matricing system on stage with, a, with a, one of the um, Midas XL 88s, you know, the matricing reader, analog reader thing. Yeah. So um, Adam, the monitor engineer, has done a really cool jo- job where we can, so there's also live vocoder, there's the colored sounds amp, there's Avalon, but we've got multiple handhelds, you know, we've got loads, I think it was like six or eight we were up to at one point in stadium shows. Any of those mics can go to the Avalon, can go to the um, the sounds amp, can go to the vocoder, hitting it as if it's plugged into it, you know, which is important because obviously that's how you wanted to hit the pre. But what I end up getting at my end, so for the clean, I have all the clean mics and I, I decide, well, that, you know, say mics one to three are innies, so they go to the in group, and then mics four through six are outy, so they go to the out group. And then when we combine them, it's like, okay, well, there's the in, there's the out, is the in or out on this song? I just, you know, so I control it that way. Yeah. And then I have one Avalon channel, one sounds on channel, one vocoder channel, and that's all taken care of on stage. I don't have to think about which handheld he's on. Yeah. I know it's going to hit the Avalon. It's going to, you know, when it needs to, it's going to do its thing. Oh, so, and how that is controlled as well. We, actually, one of the really cool things that we came up with on the drones tour is we have what we call a spotter rack. So one of the guys from Scan, it's basically like a little, tiny little console he's got. So he, he can see which microphone Matt is holding and he makes sure that that is the active mic. You know, in these quite complex productions, it can very easily happen that somebody gets handed the wrong, you know, a different mic at the wrong time or, you know, keeping it missed or whatever. But we've got a dedicated guy who's looking at him and his job the whole way through the show is to look at him and see which mic is he holding and that is the mic that's on. We, we thought about different automation systems and the best automation system is a human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what the, a lot of these systems are for is to free up you know, it goes back to the very beginning thing that we said is like, you're mixing the show, you're listening to the song, you're reacting to the audience, your head's up. That's what all these things are for, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I love that. I And I love that you guys have a safety, uh, like a guy literally watching, uh, yeah. making sure you, um, you, your your vocalist's yeah. live. <laughs> no, you know, we, we get really hung up. I don't want to use the word hung up, but, you know, we think about with everything we do, there's also a parallel thought process about the redundancy of what you're doing. There has right. to be a way out of everything that you're doing. So, like, every one of those insertion points, there is an, a way out of, for me out of any of that. It has the whole rack. We, we actually had, you know, we had these, uh, we got them laminated, like pilot apps. So, what's happened? Here are the steps we do. Uh, and that goes on stage as well. You know, we'd already thought about every eventuality of failure and have planned the steps to do that failure. And then we would rehearse each one, like once or twice. Okay, this has failed. Go through the steps. Did that work? Yes, no. If it didn't, got to refine that. So it's great because in the middle of stadium show kicking off and da-da-da and X, Y, and Z has gone wrong, you're not, you know, it's not jump on cops going, oh, what the fuck? It's like everybody has their established steps and they just go, oh, laminated sheet, do this, do this, do this, do this. Okay. That's brilliant. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Again, not not having to think, just react. Just yeah. like, yeah. this is what we do. Yeah. And, and it, it, you know, it, it, it also means that you're problem solving in an extremely calm and yeah. clear way, which helps your problem solve better. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. That is yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So now we're going to go into some uncharted territory because in the recall world, you don't need pictures of your effects <laughs> unit. <laughs> you were gracious enough to give me a list of, of the pieces that you have in your effects rack. So at the top of your rack, you have a couple of Brucasti M7s. Yeah. Uh, what are you, what are you using these guys for? Uh, well, like I just love the the M7, an amazing reverb, and no plugins come to it yet. Primarily vocal mm-hmm. and comms. <laughs> comms. Comms, yeah, yeah, comms, especially for big tall moments. Oh, I thought you said comms. I was no, just like, comms. whoa, <laughs> you you're a sick man. <laughs> I was just like, all right, Mark. I don't yeah. follow that. <laughs> toms, toms. Okay, toms. good. I was like, whoa. Okay, so just so everyone's clear, vocals and toms, not comms. Oh, not comms. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need. I don't need it. I need to really expand much on the Bricasti. Anyone who knows the Bricasti knows what it does. Yeah. It's. I mean, I've built up the presets over the last 
10 years or whatever. With a lot of the effects units, there's some presets in there that date right back to when I started. Um, and obviously I've added stuff over the years and trained stuff over the years, but some stuff just works. Are you kind of uh, using a plethora of all kind of algorithms or are you kind of stick into more of like a plate for vocals? And There will generally be a, a template, if you want to call it that. And then there will be extremes that go way off it. The nature of music material, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of usually a vocal plate, but sometimes it can be an enormous vocal hall. It can be yeah. whatever. Okay. Same, like toms, especially like they go from that, you know, normal to you know any of these beats. <laughs> you don't know what I mean about that. And then snares, you know, sometimes it's like distorted gates, or it's or it's straight up halls or it's whatever you know it's because of the you know the gamut of, the, of, of what's going on uh, to answer your question yes there is a template but it's also extremely you know varied so are you so you so you're also sending snare sometimes so you're automating sometimes you're oh, yeah, so, so sometimes yes yeah, so, so sometimes the amp one of the, 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 the toms m7 will have to do some snare work or sometimes the toms are going to wherever. Yeah. But the structure is essentially, you know, I have to, I have to think about it that way because yeah, it's great that you can fire things wherever you want, but you've got to think about your structure first, you know? Yeah. Otherwise yeah. you'll confuse the shit out of yourself. Yeah. yeah. So the SDX 2000 is my snare reverb. Ah. Uh-huh. Now it's doing other stuff too, but, uh, and then the second SPX is what I would call my modulation. So if I need a, a flange moment or a phase moment or a distorted phase moment or whatever, there's just, you know I like I like to get into those details of t- tiny little things that need to happen that that happens there, or specific types of slap or you know just weird things that that we've worked on over the years and I've got all those presets there and I know they're going to work. Are those more geared towards vocal treatment? No, it can be, it can be you know it can be phased overheads, it can be slow flange rides. Oh. It, the vocal distortions, it can be guitar <laughs> moments, it can, you know, it can, so so the second SBX is, you know, it's a workhorse, lots of jobs to do. But these are these are moments, you know, but, but sometimes they're the moments that you need to make the thing, you know. Yeah. Then the H3000, essentially, all it does is vocal doubler. Okay. It's a bit of vocal doubler, part for, and then it's got varying degrees of that. So it's either like 3, 6, or 12. So there's... Uh, we use a track called Supermassive Black Hole, which is a very vocal doubly sound. So that's what I use for that. And then some of the other songs that will have, you know, lesser degrees. But the H3000 vocal doubler, nothing else does that. It will give you that sound. Nothing yeah. else. So and see, you- a lot of the effects units, you know, they're, they're still there because I still haven't found anything that will replace them. Uh, so what, what, you had something below the H3000? Okay, the X120, which finally got retired. The, the Avid Pro Subharmonic finally retired the old disco uh. Found something better. Oh, I hate to say better, but yeah, like different or yeah, different better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the the, the Avid Pro Heart Subharmonic is it's 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 great. It's precise as well. I generally I use it on four toms, and the there's one like crazy guitar moment during the show that I it all goes and I use it for that and a couple of effects moments. But mostly, most of the work it does is four toms. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Well, and that, that feels like a, it, it's such a part of, of Muse's uh, sound anyways. They seem to have a very modern rock sound, but they're not afraid of low end. So they have a well, lot of low end effects and they yeah, use yeah. the entire spectrum from 20 hertz to 20K. It's like, it's yeah. very open. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, genre jumping, you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. dealing with rock tracks with big 909 and 808 numbers. You know, it's... It's the full spectrum. And the trick as well is that, you know, if, if we go to a song that's just like a straight up three piece rock song, like Bug and Baby or something like that, and then it goes into something which, you know, is quite recent and, you know, it's got a lot of synth work going on and sub work going on and stuff like that. The trick is that they should sound as big as each other also from the show point of view, you know? You can't yeah. have like three piece rock song turn into a weedy, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You got you got to really think about that as well. You got to kind of plan how you do that. So saving how you do things. So to circle back, you you mentioned you run your sub on an aux. The send to the subs. Okay, so part of how I how I think about sub. So there's a full range system in the air. So any subs that are in the air with that system making a full range. Okay, so everything that's in the air is left right. Got it. Sub auxes don't go up. Don't go in the sky. Got so it. the ground, that's where the sub box goes. 
So it's kind of like an effect. You're treating the ground substance as an effect. Like an effect. Yeah, so it's an additive sub as opposed to how you're thinking about the picture of your mix. So the, the mix is full range. And then you've got an other sort of thing that's happening. So sometimes I will think, okay, this element should not be up there. It should be down there. So you can play with that relationship as well. Again, this is a dark matter thing as well. You know, yeah. so you can pick. So say that this sort of harmonic um, return that won't go near. That'll just go down. So you create this size. You create this. You know, you, you start to round out the picture like that. But you got to be careful about you know what's up and what's down and what's the relationship between them. But but it's it's funny like things that technically shouldn't work can 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 really work. And it's, it's it's like another layer to play with. The left right mix. You know, if you turn the sub off, the, the sub ogs off, the mix is still there. You know. Okay. So so basically, most of your so well actually, your your show is up in the air. And your your floor your ground subs aren't always running, or do you have a little bit? Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're 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 mostly always running. Um, it's I, I do like the idea of fucking with the audience to kind of bring them back and bring them back. And, um, <laughs> a dynamic is such a huge part of what I do. You know, I think are we missing anything? I think we made it through oh. your your rack. Yeah. Well, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings me to like the big question. Uh, it's a question that I ask. Um, Everybody that comes on, I want to ask, what is your secret sauce? If if there was one thing that you would call your secret sauce, what would that be? Well, if we go back to the beginning again, what we're talking about, the idea of hands-on faders, head up, da, 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 da. I yeah. definitely say it's the master fader, how I use the master fader. Usually got one hand on the master fader all the time, and, and I love to pull back, but but never push without having pulled back first. Yeah. It's kind of living with the audience and staying in the gig. And being at the gig, you know, what I've learned over the years is how much, how much you can you can really ride the audience with you, you know, and how yeah. much tension you can build. And my approach has always been kind of a bit more, a bit more drama, a bit more, you know. Now, obviously, you don't. It's always following the intention of the song and the material. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but it, it's also being aware of the experience of an of, of an audience over two hours or over two and a half hours how do they feel when they leave you know or are you abusing them <laughs> you know? yeah. but it's feeding it's you know it's, it's kind of feeding feeding the song bringing the audience with you or feeding where they're going going with them you know yeah i could just picture bringing it back which would make audiences lean in and then yeah. you have that ability to push back and and forth yeah. kind of depending on your what, what's yeah. happening I in your show know, a really simple example is you know you if the arrangement in the, in the verse kind of gets a little bit more sparse, you kind of just come back a little bit on that too. You, you ride yeah. your mask down because you don't need it. Yeah. And then when you hit that chorus again and you just go back to where you were, Yeah. but it's to the audience, it feels like you've gone, boom! Like yeah. That. yeah. Uh. It happens. You just, you know, you've, it's, it's, it's all kind of psychoacoustic mind games, you know? So yeah, it's, 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 it's a way to give all those big impact moments that you want, that you need and that, the audience wants and, and that the, the song wants that the, the artist wants but being able to kind of do that over a longer period of time and, and create a better emotional experience I mean, you know I don't want to get too like no that's the way I kind of think of it is like, like you can play a lot more with the emotion of what's happening in the room so basically yesterday we requested some questions from some people uh, on social media on Instagram and Facebook I requested one word answer uh, questions uh, for you to, to make it kind of quick. The first question is uh, default setting for you, EQ before compression or compression before EQ? EQ before compression. Okay. This next one, uh, I I really loved. Top, middle, or bottom bunk? Oh. Cool. <laughs> Come on, you should know that. Well, you're talking, to, oh yeah, that's American buses. Okay. Uh, it's oh, middle. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's mi- mi- middle, middle, middle front left. Okay, middle, front, left. Well, we already covered that. Subs, ox fed, or full range. That might have been an insider, I guess. <laughs> and, of course, this came up. Favorite flip-flops. <laughs> well, you know what? You know, if, 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 if you're mixing the headliner of a stadium show and it's 40 degrees Celsius on a, a night in Germany, you wear flip-flops too. <laughs> I'm not yeah. being a long guy. I'm mixing the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just you thought that was the load. I no. All right. So the last question I got for you: If you had one mic to do an entire show, which mic would that be? 
Neumann KMS 104. Beautiful. Or 105. It's the handheld Neumann Vulcan mic. Yeah. yeah. You, really? If I, Can I, if I had to do everything with one mic. That's it. I love it. I love it. That's that's a that's a pretty unique answer. Every monitor engineer is going, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be your monitor guy. Uh, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Mark, this has been amazing. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with me. I know that the time difference uh, was not our friend on this. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I really do appreciate you coming on and, hey, and sharing the an earthquake during it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at least there was no earthquakes. Uh, I'm glad you're safe uh, and have a great gig. Again, yeah. thank you so sure. much. No, absolutely. My pleasure. Well, that's it for this episode of Over Your Shoulder. Again, I want to thank Mark for coming on and sharing his time and his knowledge with all of us. If you dug this video, please like, please share, and please subscribe. Until next time, take care and be safe.